This is just a short video reviewing derivatives. In this video, we'll assume prior knowledge of the limit definition of a derivative and some conceptual understanding of derivative as slope. This video will focus on differentiation formulas, specifically the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, and the chain rule. Let's start off with a specific case of the power rule which I'll describe here as the derivative of a constant function, so essentially dealing with an exponent of zero. The derivative of any constant function is zero. And if you picture graphically, um, for example, what the line f of x equals five looks like, we understand that's just a horizontal line with a y value of five for any x value. So the derivative here for f of x equals five would be zero. Similarly, with the example below, um, this is looking now at the derivative of another uh, constant function. Here it's just negative 2. Same as above, the derivative of negative 2 is 0. Please note that a constant function is different than a constant multiple, which we'll see shortly. So the full-on power rule says that the derivative of x to the power of n can be found by bringing down the power of n, and then reducing the power by 1. So we'll try out two examples here. The first example says f of x is equal to x cubed. So with our understanding of the power rule, we'll say now that f prime of x involves bringing down that power of 3 and reducing that power of 3 by 1, making the new power just a power of 2. So 3x squared would be the derivative of x cubed. The next example is asking us to take the derivative of 4x squared. And this is where I had noted that a constant multiple is different from a constant function. So as we take the derivative here, we'll just go ahead and uh, pull down the power of 2. The 4 is a constant multiple in this case, it's just there for the ride and the power on x is getting reduced by 1, so that new power would be 2 minus 1, or just 1. So we can say that the derivative of 4x squared would simply be 8x. So the power rule is used very extensively, of course, when taking derivatives. It's an important one to know. And then the other rules we're going to look at now um, include the product, quotient, and chain rule. So the product rule states that if you're multiplying two functions, f and g, that the derivative of that product can be found by taking f, multiplying it by the derivative of g, adding to that g times the derivative of f. Um, so notice, of course, since, since we are adding, uh, order, of course, doesn't matter. So in the example here, we have y prime equaling, or sorry, y equaling the square root of x times the quantity x plus 2. So in order to find y prime, I'll just be noting on the side here what I'll take to be my first function f, which will be the square root of x. So if f is the square root of x, we know that the square root of x is really the same as x to the one-half power, which is important for the sake of deriving. And that means that f prime would involve the power rule we just discussed. Power of one half comes down, and then when I reduce a power of one half by one, I'll be getting a negative one half. Uh, for our function g in this example, g is taken to be x plus two. Notice that the derivative of x plus two is just one. So now that I have the pieces of the product rule on the side, I think I'm just going to go ahead and state what our derivative will be here, give a little bit more space. So given the function y in this example, y prime will equal f, which is x to the power of 1 half, multiplied by g prime, which is 1, added with g, which is the quantity x plus 2, multiplied by f prime which is, let's see, we have f prime being 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. So if you want to clean up a little bit, you can, but in terms of taking the derivative, that would be it. The next rule we'll look at is the quotient rule. 
and there are many instances where you might be inclined to take any problem that looks like the quotient rule applies and rewrite it so that the power the product rule applies instead just something to keep in mind um, so for example in this case just remember that I could write this fraction as x plus 1 times x squared minus 3 to the power of negative 1 and then I'm really using the product rule with the next rule after this one, which is the chain rule. But for the sake of illustrating the quotient rule, let's work it as it's written. So the quotient rule says, if you're deriving f over g, the derivative can be found by taking g, multiplying that by f prime, subtracting f times g prime, order of course matters here since we are subtracting, and then we'll divide by g squared. Uh, I personally like to remember this as low d high minus high d low over low squared. You may have likely heard that before as well. So in this example, where we have y equaling x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 3, we can tell that the upper function f is x plus 1, making f prime simply 1, our lower function here is x squared minus 3, and the derivative of x squared minus 3 would give us 2x. So I just like to do that little work on the side so that I'm ready to come back now and say for this function, when we apply the quotient rule, we will have the lower function, which was x squared minus 3, multiplied by the derivative of the upper function, subtracted by the upper function, multiplied by the derivative of the lower function, all divided by the lower function squared. And again, feel free to clean up a little bit, distribute, um, but in terms of applying the quotient rule, that's what it takes. The last rule we'll look at briefly here is the chain rule. The chain rule is so critical um, and it hides out in lots of different types of functions. Uh, if you've taken Calculus 1 already, you've seen it uh, applied in the context of trigonometric functions, exponential functions, log functions. Um, but this example here I'm going to show is just the most kind of um, basic form of, of where the chain rule might be applied. So I've written it out here. Um, the notation of this rule is a little hard to unpack, so the example may help more. But we're saying if we have a function which is defined as a composition of functions, so f of g of x, then taking the derivative of that composition of functions basically involves taking the derivative of the outer function, evaluating it at the inner function, and then multiplying by the derivative of the inner function. Let's try that out in this example here. Uh, we're given the function y equals the quantity x squared plus 3x to the power of 4. So when we talk about y prime in this case, just to unpack the inner and outer a little bit, the outer function in this case is saying we have something to the power of 4. And then the inner function is saying we've got this quantity x squared plus 3x. So the chain rule says take the derivative of the outer function and evaluate it at the inner function. So the derivative of a quantity to the power of 4 would be 4 times the quantity to the power of 3 now. We're reducing the power by 1. So we've evaluated it at the inner function, and now we're just multiplying by the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of x squared plus 3x would give us just 2x plus 3. And that is what the chain rule looks like, but again, many other places you can see it. Uh, I'll just write a few samples on the bottom here. Um, of functions such that when you take the derivative you're using the chain rule. So anything trig function where the argument is more complicated than x, uh, I could have a function involving an exponential where the power is more complicated than x, uh, and I think I said a log function is another common place you'll see 
the chain rule getting used. So definitely an important one to know. The last thing to note briefly here is that it is good to know derivatives of your trig functions. So derivative of sine and derivative of cosine definitely are important ones to know. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Now, if you only know those two things, you can easily derive the other four statements on the screen here um, just using rules we've already discussed in this video. For example, to find why the derivative of tangent is secant squared, I could use uh, an identity from tr trigonometry which says that tangent is just sine over cosine. And then I could use the quotient rule and plug the pieces into the quotient rule and it would simplify it down to the secant squared we see over here on the side. So that would be a great exercise on your own just to run through these last four and verify why they are the way they are um, using some trig identities and the rules we looked at in this video. So that's just a refresher. Uh, if you're watching this video, hopefully you've learned all this at some point in time and you're just refreshing.